we see technology uh, becoming a, a a big factor in terms of our traditional view of what infrastructure is, and uh, we are reviewing everything that we have the 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 lens with which we have looked at infrastructure uh, from a technology point of view and the technology's impact on th on things like transport on things like uh, energy uh, and then s s uh, seeing what perhaps can that technology disruption do to set some of these sectors and uh, how we can adapt even our investing model to be able to, to withstand that and be much more resilient to that. And we're spending a lot of time also, uh, uh, you know, no longer seeing uh, infrastructure in a narrow bricks and mortar sense. Uh, for instance, when we think about transport, uh, assets of today and we think about airports of today will they be the same type of airports of the next 10 years uh, because will be the mode of travel be the same mode of travel of today will the travel patterns be the same when we think of uh, infrastructure and we think of urban development across the continent how will that sort of like you know get impacted when we think of urban development and we think of like you know connectivity and we think of you know the quickest mode of con of, uh, of connecting those and we're thinking of also trade what's going to be the impact of all those from a technology point of view from the type of assets point of view from a and what technology or what disruption or what innovation can we factor in to our models to be able to withstand the disruption but also to be able so to drive some of the disruption or the innovation and uh, that's why at the same time in terms of looking at our asset pools as opposed to now seeing assets in their uh, in their individual sort of like uh, perhaps just seeing an airport on its own we see how then can we put that airport with other transport assets into one uh, platform or into one uh, vehicle to make it much more resilient in terms of uh, other connections uh, whether physically or whether technology wise in terms of you know improving the capacity to compete in future because we've seen the connectedness of everything going forward and how are all those things going to work into each other and to the extent that we can then form a much more connected assets. I think the better we will be able to withstand disruption going forward, the better we will be able to uh, compete from a uh, balance sheet strength point of view, because we, I think that this, we, we cannot wish away the global nature of everything and uh, everybody. So we're competing with local entities we compete with the international entities even those which have not even set foot here we're still competing with them so the issue is that how then do we play and be uh, globally competitive within our own environment and to be able to like you know be still significant players within our chosen uh, uh, sphere here within the, the continent and I think uh, looking at all those, the disruption, adaptation, and then a uh, platforms which can be able to sort of like, you know, offer much more uh, value added and combined uh, platforms. I think it will be the way to go forward. And in as much as I think the, the internet, the World Wide Web is connecting everything. It's not only on from technology. So I think more, much more things are going to be much more connected. We're going to need a much more seamless nature, not just in that sense, but I think also our asset class is also going to be impacted. And we're also looking at what does it look like in 10 years' time? What 
imagine businesses can we perhaps buy into, which is not today, but within the pure infrastructure model that we know, that might perhaps be in the next five to 10 years, the new infrastructure asset class, because I think even that definition is changing in as much as like, you know, what we knew about everything. What the telephone was 20 years ago, is a very different thing to what a telephone is today. <laughs> so I think everything is being changed in that way. And uh, our, the culture we're trying to build at Harrod is that one which is adapt, adaptive, one which like embraces uh, disruption, and one which like um, uh, takes a view of say, what can this possibly look like in another five, 10, 15 years? And uh, what sort of like partnerships can we build in to enable us to play in that longer term sphere?